Hello, in this lesson I'm going to be giving a sort of a quick overview of fractions, sort of everything I expect people to be able to do with fractions before they get to high school. Um, you know, you really start seeing fractions sort of a little bit more formally in maybe third grade. Some people might see it a little earlier than that. And so it's really hard to do justice to say third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth, seventh, you know. Um, but, you know, I'm hoping to keep this relatively quick and hit sort of all the things. It's not going to be everything, but it's going to be enough that uh, you'll hopefully remember how to work with fractions by hand. Um, fractions are broken numbers. Fraction actually comes from the same Latin root as fracture, like as in a broken bone. And so it's this idea of like equal parts from something. Uh, the numerator is actually the number of equal parts. So the top number is the e number of equal parts. The denominator tells you how many of those parts it would take to, to get a whole, to get one. So sort of this graphic here, we've got a cake. It's been cut into four equal slices. Each slice is a quarter or one-fourth of the original cake. Three quarters remains. One quarter has been removed. Um, Unit fractions go all the way back to ancient Egypt. Um, Egyptians understood one half, one third, one fourth, one fifth. So we're talking about like, you know, 5,000, 7,000 years ago, humans had fractions, but it was sort of the basic ones. Like, my four year old kind of understands a half. Um, there's a lot of ways to like sort of think about, talk about right fractions. Uh, I thought of these five kind of off the top of my head. I might have left something out. Um, for common fractions, you might be see them almost in print, written out as often as you see either the slanted or the upright fraction. Um, there's definitely a good connection here to ratios, which are usually written with the um, colon or the word two and of course because it's about dividing up things or breaking numbers apart there's obviously going to be connections to division so you could even think of this three divided by four is the same as three-fourths um, mixed numbers and improper fractions this is a mixed number it includes a whole number and a fractional part. There is an understood plus sign between them. That's one thing that maybe you um, don't really think about. This is really two plus one third. This is seven thirds. Um, seven equal parts where it takes three of those parts to get a whole. And these are the same quantity um, you probably know that already, but you know, it's, it's quite tough probably for my son who's getting ready to go into fifth grade. So that's a good place to sort of pause for our first batch of examples. And we're going to look at um, if it's a mixed number, we're going to convert it to an improper fraction. And if it's an improper fraction, we're going to convert it to a mixed number. There's probably several ways that. Um, People have been taught to do this. I'm looking at sort of what I think of. Sorry about that. What I sort of think of as the standard algorithm in most cases when I show you guys. So I would think that a lot of people were probably taught to convert a mixed number to improper fraction. They were probably taught that you take the one, the big number, and you multiply by the denominator three, get three, add that to the numerator, two, and get five. And so the answer here is five thirds. I want to talk just a little bit about why that works. And it does kind of almost get us into addition with fractions, but that's okay. Um, the number one is the same as three-thirds and three-thirds and two-thirds 
a terrible three. Sorry about that. Let's try that again. Um, three thirds and two thirds is definitely five thirds. So that's sort of the idea. It's a thought bubble for you. What's going on here? And that's well, maybe you don't get the thought bubble. That's why you have sort of this idea work the way it does. You're doing three times one to convert the whole part into a fraction with uh, what's called a common denominator that we'll of course need anytime we're going to add fractions and then you put that back with the fractional part. So 7 times 5 is 35. So this is really 35 out of 5 and 4 out of 5. So this one is the same as 39 fifths. So this is 20 out of 10. And 9 out of 10. So this is the same as 29 tenths. To go in the other direction, I think the standard thing that most people will remember is that you actually do the division because the fraction bar means division. The fraction bar, by the way, has a formal name. It's the vinculum, and I only know that because I teach high school math. So if you didn't know that, you don't have to feel bad. Maybe that'll win you a thousand dollars on my game show one day. Um, so let's do this as well, okay, fraction, one way to think about it is the division. Maybe we even write the division this way. Well, 2 goes in the 7 three times. That makes 6. Take away 1. 2 doesn't go into 1, so there's a remainder of 1. So this is the same as taking 3 and adding 1 out of 2. So this is 3 and a half. We just don't normally write the addition sign. So skipping straight to the division here, we got to divide 3 into 11. Well, that goes in 3 whole times. Well, that was quite a mess, wasn't it? It's the beauty of one take. Even if it messes up, I'm probably not going to fix it. 3 times 3 is 9. Do the subtraction, get 2. 2 is less than 3, so that's a remainder. So 11 out of 3 is the same as 3, this 3. So let's do red. It would be nice if the pin would cooperate. And two out of three. You gotta know which three is which. Alright. Good enough. If you don't like the divisions, something different you could do is divisions repeated subtraction. So you could start at 47 and subtract 11. Hey, that's 36. Subtract 11. Hey, that's 25. Subtract 11. Hey, that's 14. Subtract 11. A that leaves three. Um, we subtract eleven. One, two, three, four times. So it's four. Um, three was less than eleven, so I couldn't take eleven away anymore. So I was left with three parts out of eleven. And you could really quickly check this. If you like the uh, first three examples, you could do 11 times 4 is 44, and 44 plus 3 is 47. 
So hopefully that kind of um, reminds you of all of those things. Let's go ahead and look at uh, simplifying in common denominators. Um, you could have seen this a couple different ways. Probably the most mathematically correct way that you may not even realize this is really what you're doing is saying, well, force 2 times 2, these 2's cancel to 1, so what would be left is 1 out of 2. Um, 12 and 8, okay, that's 4 times 3, 4 times 2, oh wait, those cancel to 1. So all that's really left is 3 out of 2. Oh hey, 21, that's 3 times 7. So this is 1 third. If you're tempted to make the mistake and forget that it's about the 1 that remains, you might even want to write that 1 times 7. 1 times 2, that way it's a little more clear why your numerator is still 1. Um, we're going to look at finding, oh excuse me, I forgot, the part of the directions I put on this on the notes page was actually to use cross multiplication to verify the fractions are equivalent. Um, some people really like deal with this. So this is going to use sort of the idea of proportions. So we're claiming these two things are equal. And then like one of the first things you're taught about proportions is to cross multiply. So we're just kind of pointing out, oh hey, when you do 2 times 2 you get 4, when you do 4 times 1 you get 4. What's 12 times 2? 24. What's 8 times 3? 24. What's 7 times 3? 21. What's 21 times 1? 21. It's just a, a way to sort of check your work that's a little bit different. Okay, I do actually need to pause here and do something real fast. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. I kind of got a little bit out of order. That's okay. Um, we've already hit on a couple of these things already, so I didn't go back and cover them. Rational numbers include any number that can be written as a fraction, um, a true fraction. Like the denominator can't be zero, and the numerator and denominator are integers. They're like numbers we would expect to see in the numerator and denominator of a fraction. If you cheat and start trying to put like pi or square root of two or something funky in there, um, it's not what I mean by a fraction. Notice that ratio is hidden inside of the word rational and that's why these are called the rational numbers. They can be written as a ratio of integers. We'd also already kind of talked about proportions just a little bit. A proportion is a statement that two fractions are equal. And probably the, one of the first things you ever see about proportions is that you cross multiply proportions. And so in this case we get a times d, b times c, and you, those things are still equal. And, the, and we use that to check on this example over here. That's what we were doing there. All right, so back to sort of this example about common denominators. Um, this one, it's worth noticing, well, hey, 3 divides into 6. So because 3 divides into 6, we only need to change the 3. into a 6. Well, what do we multiply 3 by to get 6? Well, we multiplied 3 by 2. Well, that means we're going to also multiply the numerator by 2. So what we're really doing
and some of you might not have realized this is what you were doing, is you're multiplying this entire fraction two-thirds by one, but it's a special form of one, it's two over two, so we get four out of six. So the common denominator here is six. We don't even have to rewrite five out of six because fortunately it's already out of six. Also because the directions did not say least common denominator is if you had looked at this and said oh three and six fifths go into twelve or eighteen or thirty or sixty you would have still been right. You would have been able to write these with a common denominator. This problem you look at and you say well two doesn't go into sixty one. So I need a number that both 2 and 61 go into. So I'm going to cheat. I'm just going to say, well, double 61 is 122. I'll make myself a little note that I've doubled. Well, you can multiply 2 by 61. And I'll get 122 as well. So I need to multiply this by 61 in the numerator, this by 2 in the numerator. I get 61 out of 122, and then double 30 would be 60. So this is just a little less than 60. It's, and 9 times 2 is 18, so it's going to be 58. So great. Those two numbers um, now have a common denominator. And it kind of sort of makes sense because this is roughly 60 and half of 60 is 30, so 29 out of 61 and one half are pretty close to the same number. They're both right around that. One is a half and the other one's close to a half. All right, so most of the rest of this lesson is now probably the part that you're not looking forward to. It's the sort of like grinding through some arithmetic with fractions. Um, We'll start with some kind of easy ones, one eighth and three eighths. One part out of eight, three parts out of eight. Well, that makes four parts out of eight. Oh, but hey, that simplifies to one out of two. On this problem, we're adding two mixed numbers, but they have common denominators already. Three and one is four. Two fifths and four fifths would make six parts out of five. But that would be kind of bad manners to leave that that way because the 6 out of 5 is improper and it's inside of a mixed number. So that's a whole with a remainder of 1. So that will bump the 4 up to a 5. And the final answer is 5 and a fifth. Okay, here we go. We actually got to like do the work, get common denominators this time. 3 and 7 both go into 21. I multiplied the 3 by 7, so I need to multiply the 2 also by 7 and get 14. I multiplied the 7 by 3, so I need to multiply the 1 by 3. 14 parts out of 21 plus 3 parts out of 21 would be 17 parts out of 21. 4 and 1 half plus 5 out of 6. Um, okay, well, 4 and 1 half. 2 goes into 6, so it would be 3 out of 6 because 2 times 3 is 6 and 1 times 3 is 3. So we're going to rewrite it as 4 and 3 6 plus 5 6, which makes 4 and 8 6. 8 6 reduces. They're both divisible by 2. Oh, wait. 4 out of 3 is improper, and it's inside of a mixed number. So it would go, it'd be 1 whole and a third. So the final answer here is 5 and 1 third. And again, some of you may have other ways of doing this. I'm just kind of doing it the way that I usually like reason my way through it uh, based on what I remember. 3 eighths minus 1 eighth. Well, they're, they're, both, they're both parts out of 8. 
So three parts out of eight take away one part out of eight is going to be two parts out of eight. If that reduces to one fourth. Four and one third take away two and two thirds. This one's kind of the trickiest one probably on this page. Um, I think the way that a lot of you would approach it is you would do four minus two is two and one third take away a two thirds. That's actually going to be negative. You're going to owe me a third. Well, that means we probably want to write the two as thirds and it takes six parts out of three to have two. So six parts out of three take away one part out of three is five parts out of three. All right. I kind of want to go over. I mean, I think a lot of you know this, but let's just do it real fast. Let's do a real basic one. So there's our four objects that are making up, pretend they're equal, that are making up a whole. And let's say we're interested in what happens when you take one of those objects and put it with another one of those objects. So really, basically what we're doing here is we're doing one out of four plus another one out of four. What well, sort of the visual model here is you end up with that collectively is two out of four which would reduce to one half. And you can just sort of visually inspect in this case and say, well yeah, I agree, that's half that's half the purple dots, whatever. Alright. Let's back up. And let's say that we're Starting with three parts out of four, but then we lose or take away or get rid of one part out of four. Well, I think it's pretty easy. Again, I'm doing four, so it's not too bad. It's pretty easy to visualize. Well, what do we have now? We have two parts out of four, which again is half of the original dots. So, you know, the visualizing fraction arithmetic in terms of addition and subtraction, not that bad. Okay, let's see. Oh, we got one last subtraction left on this page. Um, let's see, we gotta get a common denominator. Seven happens to go into twenty-one. I have to multiply 7 by 3, so 3 times 5 is 15. So the final answer here is going to be all that's left is 2 parts out of 21. Alright, I think the way, the way that a lot of you were taught to multiply fractions, hopefully you remember straight across. Wow, that was a terrible arrow. Let's try that again. Right across. So numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator. Well, 1 times 2 is 2. Excuse me. 3 times 5 is 15. Um, okay, that doesn't reduce. We're done. 2 times 3 is 6. 7 times 4 is 28. 
Oh, hey, that reduces. They're both visible by two. They're two times three. Excuse me, two times three and uh, two times 14. So three out of 14. You could also, you were probably taught to notice that, hey, two can be used to cancel that four to a two. And then I would only do one times three is three and seven times two is 14 and you get to the answer a little faster that way. Uh, the mixed numbers, um, I'm going to convert them to improper fractions. 3 and 1 fourth, well that would be 12 fourths, so this is 13 fourths. One and three fourths, well this would be four fourths, so it's seven fourths. I'm multiplying. Four times four is sixteen. Seven times ten would be seventy. Seven times three is twenty one. Go through that again. Well, that was again. Sorry about that. The pen would be nice. What I've done is I've kind of cheated, and I'm thinking of 13 as 10 and 3, and then I'm do each of those numbers times 7, which is a little easier to do in my head. 70, 21. Hey, that's 91. Uh, 91 over 16 I know is not going to reduce because I cheated and I kind of looked at the numbers and nothing was going to cross out um, and cancel to 1 like it did up in this example. Oh hey that's a exponent of 2 in case you've forgotten that means to multiply something by itself. So 2 fifths times 2 fifths well multiplying straight across that would be four fifths. This one's a little uh, trickier. I also threw in a negative. It's a third power. But hey, we're going to do negative three over two times negative three over two times negative three over two. A negative times a negative times a negative is negative. 3 times 3 times 3, 3, 9, 27. 2 times 2 times 2 is 2, 4, 8. I know it's not going to reduce because the fraction didn't reduce to begin with. Alright, division, probably the one that you either remember the best or you remember the worst. Um, some of you might have been taught to keep change flip or uh, multiply by the reciprocal here. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that in case you're not familiar with it. We're going to do 1 sixth. We're going to change the division to multiplication and we're going to reciprocate the second fraction. These will now reduce. This is 2 times 3. This is 2 times 5. 1 times 5 is 5, 3 times 1 is 3, so 5 parts out of 3. Let's see, 8 fifths times 10 thirds, 5 actually will go into 10 twice, so 8 times 2 is 16, 1 times 3 is 3, and it doesn't say how to do the answer, so that's a reduced fraction. That's a reduced fraction. It doesn't matter if they're improper, we're good. Uh, let's see, this would be 18 sixths, so this is a total of 23 sixths. Divided by, that would be 8 fourths, so this is a total of 9 fourths. We are going to reciprocate. Six and four are both multiples of two. Our nine does nine doesn't go into twenty-three and three doesn't go into twenty-three, so this is good to go. Twenty-three times two is forty-six. Three times nine is twenty-seven. 
is 46 27. Again, let's kind of go over here to a scratch piece of paper. Uh, let's see, select all, and just delete. Let's see if I can't try to do my best here and explain this, how these work. So we're going to look at multiplication and division, why they work, why they do not as easy to think about as um, addition and subtraction. We'll start with kind of an easy one. Pretend that's a hole. Cut it in half. Then cut that in half. Well, if we cut it in half, then cut it in half again, and can agree that that's actually multiplication, then it's pretty clear that what's left is a fourth of the original. And you might say, well, okay, that, that's nice and all, but let's do something where the denominators are a little different. 3 out of 5 times um, 2 out of 3. We know the 3 should cancel to 1's and we'll be left with 2 fifths. Let's see what happens here. So I'm going to draw me a rectangle. Well, it's got to be a rectangle. Okay. Let's draw a rectangle. I'm going to divide it um, into five parts. Just kind of estimate. And I'm going to shade three parts out of five. Then I'm going to cheat. And I'm going to take the same rectangle and I'm going to divide it into three parts. Well, and I'm going to shade two parts. All right. So it's kind of hard to see there, but we done three fifths kind of that way. We're taking two thirds, kind of put it on the same rectangle. And then sort of the question is as well, how many pieces end up being shaded by both the red and the blue. So it's like one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, that's what we would get if we did three times two. Well, how many pieces are there total? Well, there's, it's now a five by three rectangle. So there's 15 total, but oh, hey, wait a minute, it's going to cancel out, and guess what? We get two fifths of the original is shaded. So hopefully that kind of sort of helps. I'm not going to get into like the, oh, it's mixed numbers, and what about that um, overly much? Um, it might be worth at least. I guess I could see it being worth our time to maybe do just a mixed number times a fraction to get a, kind of get a feel for that working too. So let's say three and two parts out of seven. And what we're going to do is we're going to multiply that by a half. 
just keep it nice and simple. So there's one, that's two, that's three. Okay, one, two, three, four parts, six parts, cheat and add, add on an extra one. All right. So we're doing three and two sevens times a half. Well, let's go through. Oh, first I probably want to shade. All right, so now we're going to physically just cut all of these things in half. So there's the three. I've cut it in half. And I actually, at that point, what do I have? Well, I have a half, a half, and a half, or one and a half. And I think most of you are going to say, well, Mr. Gardner, that's no big deal. I knew that half of three was one and a half. And then we cut that in half. What was two out of seven? What is it now? What's two out of fourteen? Remember what we would do is we would shade and realize that there's now fourteen squares total and two of them are shaded both ways. That's seventh. We need to add those two things together. Well, the common denominator would be 14, so it would be 1. This would be 7 14 plus 1 more 14 would be 8 14. Weight 14 reduces. 2 goes into both. It would be 1 and 4 7. Again, might not be the most efficient way to get there, but we're just trying to go based on what I remember off the top of my head. It's things that you all have probably seen. It's more a review than teaching you how to do stuff for the first time. Last thing I probably want to review with probability that might be helpful and related to fractions, and you're definitely going to see it on something like the ACT exam, is probability. Probability is a numerical measure of the chance or likelihood that an event will occur. Probability is often expressed as a fraction, and the denominator is like this total number of possibilities. And so we have a example we're going to do. Suppose a bag contains four red marbles, three blue marbles, two green marbles, one yellow marble. Determine the probability of randomly drawing each type of marble from the bag as a simplified fraction. So again, you probably started seeing problems like this in like maybe fourth or fifth grade, maybe sixth. And we just kind of want to make sure that you can do this still. Well, how many marbles are there total? The problem did not explicitly tell us, so we need to count or add up. So 4 and 3 is 7, and 2 is 9, and 1 is 10. Look at them being nice. There are 10 marbles total. So how many are red? Well, 4. But out of how many possibilities? 10. Well, how many are blue? 3. But out of how many possibilities? 10. How many are green? Two, but out of how many possibilities? Ten. How many are yellow? One, but out of how many possibilities? Ten. Oh wait, we were supposed to simplify these. That's one times five, or tens, or excuse me, two times five, so two's cancel, leaving one and five. Um, this is going to be two times two over two times five, so it's two out of five. And hopefully that's about everything. Hopefully you feel good and refreshed from fractions now. Um, you might still be having trouble with some parts, and that's okay, because fractions are pretty hard for a lot of people. And that's okay. Um, you just can't be scared of them. That's the number one thing. We'll use them um, 
pretty much all year. So thanks for your time. See you next time.